Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World. Today we're at the Iguazu Falls here in Argentina, actually the border of Argentina and Brazil. And today we're going to give you some tips about visiting the falls because it is one of the things you really should do when you come here to South America. But since there's a lot of people here and the falls are loud, we're actually going to film it inside the town of Puerto Iguazu. But I wanted to show you the beginning of the falls. You walk out here, it is well worth it. Make sure you get up to Garganta del Diablo, the road of the devil, for a beautiful view. Yes, those falls are awesome. And when you come to Brazil or you come to Argentina, the Iguazu Falls are actually one of the best things to come visit when you do come to these countries. And the thing is, if you're trying to choose which side to come to, the Argentine side or the Brazilian side, you should know about 80% of the falls are on the Argentine side, about 20% is on the Brazilian side. So, but the thing is, if you want that really cool view of the panoramic view of all of the waterfalls, you get that view from the Brazil side. But if you want to really want to get up and where all my videos are coming from today, that that's actually the Argentine side because you have the Garganta del Diablo, which is the, the, the walkway, the, the throat of the devil. You're walking up to it and you really see it and the mist is coming and all the water is pounding down. And it is really great. And the thing is, either side you go on do have hikes and stuff you can do. Um, I will say this, there's more hiking and more stuff to see and do and you'll need more time on the Argentine side than the Brazilian side. But if you can't do both, I would say do the Argentine side over the Brazilian side just because there's a lot more things to do and see when you are there. Now, when you go, the thing is, if you want to do one of the boat tours or something like that, I would recommend booking it when you get there or have it booked before you get there because they do sell out, especially at busy times of the year. And the busy times, you know, they're, they're in school holidays and stuff like that. For example, here in Argentina, at mid end of July is actually uh, vacation time from the schools in the winter. So you have a lot of families that come here. So hotels book out and stuff like that. I know when we were there, the guy's like, hey man, come back in October. That's the best time to come because you get good water, good weather, and there's not a lot of other people around. I'm like, oh, thanks for telling me that now, okay? But I thought I'd let you know. Now, when you are there, some things you should know. I'm gonna talk about the Argentine side, okay? When you go there and you're going to buy your ticket at the gate, you can pay with MasterCard or Visa. That's it in terms of credit cards, or you can pay in cash. The thing is, they have different prices if you're from Argentina, if you're from one of the Mercosur countries, or you're extranjero, a foreigner. And with the economic situation here in Argentina, prices do fluctuate a lot. So instead of giving me the pesos price, I say it was somewhere between 20 and 25 dollars, US dollars, to actually go into the park. So you know that. The thing is, when you go into the park, you do need to have an ID because if you can talk your way out of it, maybe you don't. But I'm going to tell you, bring an ID with you. I used my driver's license. That was okay. I had actually uh, screen caps of my family family's passports and that was okay that time but you do need to have ID when you go there because they ask for it and you buy your tickets. I think it's more for to make sure if you're Argentine or Paraguayan or whatever to see what price you should pay so just have a heads up for that. I did find the people at the check-in were very nice and where you got your tickets it is kind of a long line to get there at busy times of the year but the people were friendly so that was totally fine. Now when you go to the Argentine side you're gonna go in and you're gonna take a train twice okay when you first get on the train, there's a train that goes every half hour up to the second station. So there's a central station, then you go up to one, and then you go up to another one. There's Cataratas, and then there's Garganta. And Cataratas, when you go there, that's where you get off to do some of the hikes, okay? You have the lower circuit, which takes you through the lower part of the falls. That one has a lot of steps, okay? That's the one they say, look, if, you, if you're not good and you don't like to hike and stuff like that, that's the one to avoid. If you take the higher circuit or the upper circuit, that's the one you also walk along the falls, but it's not as difficult to do, not as many steps and stuff like that. So, so you do have that. But the thing is, is when you get there, you wanna take that train from the central station up to, up to the second stop, right? Thing is, you get a ticket and it's every half an hour. You don't have to wait in line because it's kind of like, hey, everybody with ticket A6, you're going to board now. And everybody rushes on board and it's a little tight sometimes on that train because they get four people and four people, you know, in the seats. So you're kind of snug. And the thing is, when you get up to the next level, you can either go do the hikes or you get in another line to get the ticket to La Garganta, the Garganta del Diablo. And I would say, if you're going to do it, get there and then go to the Garganta first and then come back down and do the hikes. Because just in case you run out of time or the weather changes, which it does change a lot when you are here, you do get a chance to see the throat of the devil when you walk out on top of the falls because that is awesome, okay? And so when you get your ticket, you wait in line, you take that up to the things. And those the trains that go up to the Garganta, the, the throat, they go every 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, something like that. And so you'll get up there and you'll walk. It's about a kilometer walk to go from where the station is to actually where the waterfalls are, okay? So you're walking through that. And it is really cool when you get there and you're gonna see animals and cotis. The cotis are like 
kind of like raccoon kind of things you're going to see them when you're going through the thing is don't feed the animals they have tons and tons of things telling you not to feed the animals because you'll see they'll show pictures of people getting scratched and bitten and stuff like that and with those coaties they're everywhere and the thing is these animals are really really cute like oh look at them and you'll see five or six going across the road going across the tracks walking through the the restaurant areas the thing is is just because they're cute and cuddly doesn't mean you touch them because they will bite they will scratch and i don't think you want that and so do be careful with them you'll see them they won't bother you they'll climb their trees and stuff but if you do bother them they probably will bother you back so don't feed them they have tons of signs saying that now some of the animals you actually see are there aside from the quality you might see a tamir you don't see that too often there's also jaguars you might see there you'll see turtles you'll see lots of birds and fish and stuff so it's kind of a cool nature hike when you go through these things but again, don't feed the animals, all right? Now, when you're coming back down, you might not want to take the trains every single time. Um, we just took the train back down from the, the Garganta to Cataratas. Again, you get the ticket, you wait for your time to go and you go down, you can hike down it. Actually, we, we hiked down from the second station to the main station, so like the middle to the bottom. 700 meters, easy walk, no big deal, okay? But the thing is, when you're there, you might want to say, how much time do I need? Well. If you're gonna be on the Brazil side, I mean, a half day, you, you'll be fine. If you're on the Argentine side, you're gonna need the whole day. We left at 10 in the morning and we came back at five and all we, I mean, we didn't get to do as much stuff as we wanted to. We didn't get to do the lower circuit. We just ran out of time. So if you wanna make sure, if you wanna hike, you know, Garganta, you wanna hike the lower circuit and the upper circuit, make sure you're leaving and you get there when it opens at eight o'clock in the morning, okay? On the Argentine side, that's when the park opens. You get your ticket, you can head on out. Now the thing is, it stopped. They stopped selling tickets at 4:30, okay. And I think the last train up to the Garganta is at four, all right. And then it, then the whole park closes around six-ish or something like that. So make sure you're getting back before there. Now, if you want to get to the park, you can take taxis there, and there are taxis there that you can hire when you come back, or you might have to hire a remise or a private car from your hotel. They're relatively cheap. You can get them there and back, and schedule time to go. But honestly, because of the trains and stuff like that, I mean, if you're going to be there for five hours, maybe an hour of it's going to be like train stuff. You're going to do trains all the time. So just, just have a heads up for that. So give yourself ample time when you're there. Now, when you are there, there are, they do have, you know, restaurants and there are some like fast food kind of places and snack shops. They do have those. Um, on the base, you know, when you first come in, there's a cafeteria and a fast food place. There's a Freddo, the ice cream place that's probably here in Argentina. There's shops you can go buy stuff. So if you want to get a poncho, because the thing is the rain changes changes there the weather changes so quickly here that you can have great sun and then it'll be pouring down rain in no time i know last time i was here a few years ago i mean it was like 20 minutes of blazing sun and then 30 minutes of just downpour and then 20 minutes of beautiful sun and so it switches back and forth so have a poncho that you can put over yourself and your bag because everything will get soaked now the thing is if you're here when it's lower water season and not so much rain you'll be fine we were there yesterday sun the entire time we did not get wet except for the mist coming off the falls, which is really great. Now, the thing is, when you're there, you obviously want to get the photos and the videos of the waterfalls. And at busy times, and even not at busy times, you will be fighting for position to see the cataratas, to see the waterfalls crashing down. Have patience, get in there, and don't be scared to like fight for your space because other people are going to be fighting for that too. So do be careful. Also, I would say is if you have a neck strap, put that on your camera or on your wrist in case you drop it because once it's gone, it's gone. Also, I would say with the with the photography stuff, sometimes if you want to get your family pictures, I'd actually maybe come a little bit farther back up the walkway where there's a little more viewing areas. So you don't get that big, huge cataratas waterfall feel, but the thing is you have more space there. So that's kind of one of those things. It just depends how many people are there at the time when you are coming here the thing is, is since this is at the board of paraguay brazil argentina right there you can actually use multiple currencies in the park so you can use the argentine peso because of that part of the park's in argentina you can use us dollars no problem and you can use reals and actually at the shops they'll give you a little sign saying what their what their exchange rate they'll give you for at that time again like i said they took credit cards it was no big deal now when you are coming here you might want to look at where should i stay when i'm here you have Porto Iguazu, okay, that's the Argentine city that's here. You have Falls de Iguazu, which is the Brazilian side. And then you have Ciudad de Este, which is in Paraguay. Look, if you're just coming here for Iguazu Falls, you don't need to go to Ciudad de Este. Ciudad de Este in, in, in Paraguay is basically one to go shopping, okay, but not for like fancy shopping. It's like, oh, I want to buy 15 laptops, okay? And, 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 and also to get a stamp in your passport for Paraguay. The thing is, you want to make sure you know if you need a visa for Paraguay or not, so that could be an issue. Now, when you're looking at coming here, 
Iguazu is not really close, all right? If you're gonna fly, it's about a two hour flight to uh, Buenos Aires, if you're gonna go from Iguazu, the, the Porto Iguazu airport. If you're gonna go from the Brazilian side on Foz, it's like, I don't know, hour and a half, a little bit less than two hours to fly to Sao Paulo, okay? So the two main hubs you're probably coming from. If you're gonna take the bus, Jesus, it's just, it's, I've done it before with the bus from Buenos Aires and it's like 18 hours in a bus from from Buenos Aires. So you might wanna stop on the way somewhere, maybe go to Posadas or Corrientes or someplace on your way up here just so you're not like on the bus forever because it is a really, really long bus ride. Same thing from Sao Paulo. Maybe visit some other parts in that part of Brazil instead of just you know going one shot to Sao Paulo or Rio or something like that or Belo Horizonte to see Minas Gerais because it is really, really a long way to go. Now, like I said, when you want to get around town, there's taxis here, no problem. You can have your hotel book stuff, no big deal. Places to stay, there are tons and tons of hotels, posadas, you know, hostels that are here in Iguazu on both sides. What we've actually stayed at this time is we stayed at the, the Grand Hotel here. It's a casino and spa resort kind of stuff. The prices here are very fair and they actually had a kids section here. So the kids got to play and, and do activities and stuff. So it was really nice. So you do have like a full gamut of options when you don't do come here to stay. So that is really cool. Cause the first time I came here, I, I mean, I did the hostel. The second time I came here, I stayed in Posada. This time I'm here at a, at a nicer hotel. It, it's like the rooms are equivalent of like a nice Holiday Inn or, or, or a Hampton Inn kind of stuff. And it is pretty nice when it's here. And of course, when you do come here, remember this is Argentina and Brazil. So eating, it starts later at night. You know, things don't get started quite as early in the morning. So just have it gives you a heads up for that. Also, don't forget when you're going to go to the falls, you're going to get wet. And I said, get the poncho stuff. But also, this is probably a place where a lot of people kind of chill out for a while. There are plenty of lavanderias in town, so you can have your laundry done there cheap by some people, or the hotels will do them for you too, so you can have that. But that is one of the things you will notice that stuff will get wet, and it will stay wet, all right? So just have a heads up for that one. And of course, you might want to know what you're going to eat when you are here. What's cool is it's on the Brazil and Argentina border, so you get some of the best of both worlds. You have the pau de queijo from Brazil. You've got the amazing steaks from Argentina. You got the fruit from Brazil. I mean, there's all this great mixture here. And it is really cool. So you also have the great wine from Argentina that's up here and a good beer as well that you can have. So it makes for a nice, like, relaxing place to go. So I hope you do come up here to Iguazu when you do visit Brazil or you do visit Argentina because it is well worth it. It's, you know, it's near the top of my list of places to come in South America because this is a great place to relax, but also see one of the world's most beautiful nature wonders out there. I mean, it's one of the seven natural wonders of the world and for very good reasons. So we're here at the Foz de Iguazu airport, actually on the Brazilian side, it's the Brazilian airport. And I guess some advice I would have for you when you're coming to Iguazu or you're going to be using this kind of a base to like go to another part of South America. America. If you're going to be flying to other parts of South America, get the flights from Falls de Guazú, the Brazilian side, because the flights are insanely more cheap when you're flying out with Gol and stuff like that, or Avianca, out of Falls de Guazú to go into Brazil, okay? If you're going to be visiting Argentina and other things there, you're going to fly out of the Puerto de Guazú, the one in the Argentina side. The prices are significantly different. And if you're thinking, well, I'm just going to stay on the Argentina side and not worry about it and fly out, you're going to have a connector flight and it's going to be significantly more expensive if you're going to be going to Brazil. So just kind of thinking about that when you are going to be flying out of here. The thing is, though, I know I told you about if you're going to the parks, the uh, Argentina side of the parks has got a lot more stuff to do. But on the Falls de Guazú, the city side of things, there seems to be more stuff to do. They're kind of like making up for having less of the falls by having more stuff. So you have like, there's a wax museum you can go see. There's a water park, there's stuff like that you can do. So there is alternatives. So whatever side you stay on, you will be OK. You'll have a great time. But uh, just know if it comes to transportation flying out, make sure you're checking out. We're going to be going to next and then use that airport. Also, the border crossing, uh, when you come through, it's pretty straightforward. Just know that sometimes if you go in the early morning, you might have not have any line. I know from the center of Puerto Iguazu to the airport at Falls de Iguazu took about an hour and 20 minutes with the border crossings. And there was nobody in the line for us. Like we got out, we got our stuff stamped and stuff like that, no problem. And then when, then we went through, went to the Brazilian side and did that. But there's different border crossings. So you want to check that out to see which one it's going to take. So if you do have a flight here, give yourself some time, plenty of time in case there is a long bus line. Because uh, I know with the buses I saw, like the, the travel buses, there's like 15 buses lined up going into Argentina. So if you're going the other way, you know, just have a heads up for that to give yourself that time. You might be like us, like we got here way early to the airport, but better, better way early than one minute late because you know the airlines aren't waiting for you, okay? So 
we'll go back to the other side to finish off. So I hope that helped you know a little bit more about visiting Iguazu. So if you're going to be going to the Brazil side, the Argentina side, it is really great to see and do. So do have a great time. If you want to learn more, the don'ts of Brazil, the don'ts of Argentina, things like that, check us out on our website at waltersworld.com. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and we really appreciate your likes, subscriptions, and all those that support us on Patreon. I'm going to say a big gracias. Thank you from your Iguazu Falls. Adios.